Hello, I'm Lex Brush. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on... Sailor Moon Crystal, episodes 3 and 4. Okay, I'd like to say first things first, uh, Rey is a badass and she sets things on fire. Kill it! Kill it with fire! Yeah. I also love her transformation animation. It's like the best so far. <laughs> My only minor thing with it is her pose right before she goes into the Punish You in the Name of Mars, where it almost looks like she has her hands up in her hair. Something about that, it just, it doesn't seem very, um, oh shit, it's the hero. <laughs> I didn't notice her hands were like that. I do notice that Mercury seems a little off to me, but... I also saw a clearer version of her transformation in this latest episode. It wasn't compressed as much, so I was like, well, that looks pretty good, too. <laughs> yeah, Mercury's is very good, but I think the transformations are getting better with each Sailor Senshi. Mm-hmm. So by the time Venus shows up, it's awesome. <laughs> it's like they started with Sailor Moon and have just gotten progressively better. When you think they would have, like, maybe started with one of the lesser scouts and worked their way towards Sailor Moon. <laughs> Considering all the costume changes that Sailor Moon has in the manga... Maybe they didn't want to put too much into her first transformation sequence. Mm -hmm. all, all I know is they seem to be making good use of that pen. Mm -hmm. They're bringing it up a lot, I'm surprised. It was used a bit more in the manga than in the anime, but even in the manga it tapered off. And the flight attendant and the princess outfits were both included in the first anime. <laughs> Speaking of flight attendant, Luna, why the heck a flight attendant? <laughs> Well, she had a good answer. <laughs> and then Tixio Mask going, hmm, <laughs> I think I know what's going on. <laughs> Help, guys, I don't... We're going back to Sailor Moon in the alternate dimension. Help, guys, I don't know what I'm doing. Transform! <laughs> That's a good idea. <laughs> I think it was a little bit less of, you're supposed to be a superhero, transform, and more of, transform so we can trace your signature and teleport and help you. Uh, and I really like the way they've introduced Rey and her personality and everything. I prefer it much over the older anime. Yeah, the Rey in the first anime is very aggressive and antagonistic. Yeah, very much like a Raphael if you were comparing them to the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So all that anger and annoyance at the leader not being the leader. But no, this is much more subtle. She's a bit of a shedden because she's been a shrine beaten most of her life by the looks of it. Also, her powers have made people shun her away. Right. So she's had the thoughts of, why do I even have these powers? And in finding her comrades, she's gotten an answer. And as I stated before at the beginning of this, oh my god, she is a badass when it comes to the fights. I'm like, just sets things on fire. <laughs> and she's got the right attitude when she's fighting. And, oh, speaking of during that fight... Sailor Moon, uh, you're that girl, right? No, I'm not! Ugh. At least if you're going to try to deny, try to deny convincingly. But this is the same girl who tried to hide behind a cat on a bus in the same episode. <laughs> oh yeah, that was a great scene. Like, oh, hello, I'm this. Here's my card, I'm a high schooler. Well, they aged him down a little bit, and then, ah, hide, hide behind cat. Um, the cat's smaller than you are, and Luna's not too happy about it. <laughs> not really working well, but you have to love the interactions between them, because even when they're annoyed with each other, <laughs> there's still that, that person is intriguing. Hmm, interesting. And they're also showing hints that there's that little underneath core, if we're talking about so the moon and takes a mask, little core underneath romance that they had between each other that they can't quite understand why they have these feelings but it's something there but they annoy each other a little bit so they're like nah it can't be <laughs> not like how it was in the older anime where they were almost constantly at each other's throats unless he was tuxedo mask <laughs> especially in the older anime when they were trying to do that whole weird love triangle thing between him ray and usagi they're just not doing that in this one because they're compressing it making it feel more like the manga which they're doing a great job at <laughs> Definitely, but I need to go back and look up which of the four kings goes with which princess. Because looking at this, it's like, okay, I think Rey was with Jadeite. So then who was with the other kings? 
because there was like that weird spark of recognition from Rey towards Jedite. So yeah, I remember that. Well, Rey saw Jedite in the fire, but it was Jedite who was saying, I'm strangely attracted to her. Never mind, she'll serve as bait. <laughs> and the interaction so far between characters has been really good too, between all the sailor scouts that we've seen so far and then with other people around them, like Usagi and her friends at school. Mm -hmm. And Unimo always jumping in whenever we need a plot device explained. <laughs> hey, I have this episode's plot device. Really? Are we going to be annoyed by it? Most likely. <laughs> That's probably a good jumping point off to the next episode of, hey, look, there's a princess and she looks just like me. What? <laughs> she has a good face, doesn't she? <laughs> <laughs> she's a little skinnier than how I remember in the older anime. I'm pretty sure she was a little bit shorter and chubbier. Yeah, but if you look at this anime, everyone seems to be a little bit taller and thinner. Briefly jumping back to episode 3 for two reasons. One, that we're seeing the Sailor V game give out more items. This time, the communicator watches. Oh yeah. Well, actually more bracelets than watches, really. Well, they have a watch function, so bracelet watch. And also at the end of episode three, I almost thought that we actually destroyed one of the four kings only three episodes in. Because <laughs> I didn't quite catch that that was a teleport, not a, I've been completely burned up by the flames. <laughs> yeah, we both thought that. I was like, whoa. That's all, there's no reason I thought, like, she's badass. She just got here and she's like, yeah, no problem. I got him. <laughs> I got this whole sailor thing figured out. Yeah. <laughs> And that was another thing, Usagi's reaction when he's asleep, she's asleep, and then Luna says, let's meet at the arcade at five, and she perks right up. Ah, uh, yes, the thing she's interested in, like, in the next episode where Luna's explaining everything very carefully to everyone, and then they realize, Sailor Moon's still playing a video game in the background. Aren't you paying attention? <laughs> Pay attention, this is very important stuff. <laughs> so is playing the Sailor V video games. They actually help the Sailor Scouts. Playing the Sailor V video game is important, but as to that scene, I liked that the arcade machines actually had motion going on in the background. With the logo reloading, it was mainly the one uh, that was to the left of Ray, and the one that was actually behind Ray. They only did it, I think, once, but it was a nice touch because the video games would be in attract mode and the screens would be changing. And speaking of animation, in the last episode when Mars was first introduced, I think I felt that they went a little off model as the term goes with Ray's face during certain scenes. It didn't quite look right. It looked off to me. She looked different to me, so I may have been picking up on the same thing but diff from a different perspective because it seemed like when they did certain angles on her face her face didn't look like it would from that angle and it felt like they didn't quite draw it right uh, but the animation overall has been stellar for pretty much everything there are you know certain points that we've stated before about why do we notice this is cg and that seems off because it's cg or <laughs> stuff along those lines mm -hmm. so what did you think of this latest episode with Tuxedo Mask and her getting to go to a dance or <laughs> masquerade party. Yeah, it was one I was looking forward to because it was something that I really liked in the original. And damn, if this series keeps drawing him so well, I'm going to need to watch this show with a drool cup. <laughs> uh, you and your fangirlism. <laughs> Oh, please, like you aren't just as excited over Sailor Mercury. <laughs> Actually, no. <laughs> I do not need a drool cup when she comes on. <laughs> I do not need a drool cup when she's on screen. Though I must admit that Tuxedo Mask is very well drawn, and the way they're doing the romance between the two is very subtle, but also... It, it, I wouldn't say subtle, but it's almost like it's background noise compared to the rest of what's going on. Yeah, it's more of a subplot than being anything that's center stage, because it's not really going to be center stage until, spoiler alert, just in case no one has watched or read original Sailor Moon, until their identities are revealed, Serena's the princess, Mamoru is Endemon, and they're 
fighting the big final baddie boss. Hmm. And since they're going close to the manga, that means when Sailor Venus is introduced, they're going to think her the princess, right? Right. I remember that being a thing. <laughs> yes, Venus was first thought to be the princess. So, yes, I was very much looking forward to this episode because it's one where we get more character development and story development and less fighting. Mm -hmm. Is you know, a masquerade is a great place to run into Tuxedo Mask. And I'm very impressed that Usagi didn't trip over her feet at all while dancing because she <laughs> always comes across as a bit of a klutz. But Tux seems to be really taking over and he was definitely a good lead in that dance, if you noticed. Very much so, because she was definitely in the category of, oh my goodness, I don't know what to do. And then that bit with getting a drink spilled on her and losing her handkerchief. I hope that we either see next episode that he gave it back to her sometime during this episode and we didn't see, or she notices that it's still missing, or we show Tuxedo Mask in possession of it, because Mamoru is very smart. And, yeah, he definitely knows who she is. I mean, not all of who she is, but who she is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like the part where when Nephlight casts the dark shadow inside that girl and she goes running and I believe it's foggy now, I don't know why. She knocks Sailor Moon off of the balcony and Tuxedo Mask catches her and Tuxedo Mask loses her grip and Luna goes, use your pen! And then, poof, parasol! And he's like, Thank you for saving me. <laughs> <laughs> Yay for turning the tables, especially since the opening song includes those lyrics about not waiting around to be saved by a prince. Or um, needing a man to protect them, yes. I actually mm -hmm. liked that. I was like, when I first actually really paid attention to the um, subtitles for the lyrics, I was like, oh my god! And if I remember a fact that I found out recently, I think that was actually help written by either the original producer of the songs for the old anime or the author of the manga. I can't remember. Very interesting because, you know, despite the characters needing help, for the most part, Tuxedo Mask is a token male. But he still uh, gets an interesting personality later, and his personality right now is actually pretty interesting. It's this subtle of, I've got mysteries. You want to find out more, don't you? Of course you do. Look at your man. Look at me. Look at your man again. Sadly, he's not me. <laughs> <laughs> Quite. Uh, and I don't say token male in that his character is diminished in any way. I say token male in that the cast of the show and series is primarily female. Like another show me and you both like. <laughs> so I guess it's a theme here. Magical girls! Yes, and I like how we showed the difference in the power usage between the two Dark Kings, Jadeite and Nephrite, because... Nephrite was picking on Jadak going, your creations are made out of clay, that's why they're so weak. And so when we have Nephrite, and Mars uses her power, and it doesn't work. We just saw last episode that she can seriously kick butt, but her power didn't work this time. Just like Mercury's power didn't work last time. Because the Dark Kings each fight in a different way. So the same tactic doesn't work again. Mm-hmm. And I like the call back to the fact that, oh, her tiara was incinerated. <laughs> incinerated. I can't say that word right now. <laughs> <laughs> it was turned to dust. <laughs> yes, I really didn't think that they were going to pay attention to that. I thought we were still going to get the whole stock of the transformation sequence and she'd have the tiara because it's magic. And speaking of magic tiaras, new tiara! Also, forehead beam power! I was like, what the? WTF. Where the heck did that come? It's cool, but where the heck did that come from? <laughs> I don't remember it being in the manga. I don't really remember it either, but it's definitely cool. Mm -hmm. It's like a reflective light spell if you pay attention, which kind of makes sense for the princess of the moon, which the light from the moon is reflected light. Right. And in the instructions of how to use it as an attack, it was specifically reflected moonlight. So the odds are this is an attack that she can't use in the daylight or indoors. Mm. But considering it's still a tiara, hopefully she can still throw the dang thing. Well, we'll see. It's a, definitely a slightly different tiara. And I like that Mamoru seems to also recognize the new tiara. 
So I'm thinking it's closer to what she actually wore up in the Moon Kingdom. I'm thinking it has some similarities, but I don't really remember the princess wearing much of a tiara. I mean, I know she did, but it wasn't really in that V-shaped style that the scout tiaras are. But considering that it was also seemed to be drawn from the energy that she felt from his warmth, there's definitely a connection there. It might also be where they're hiding the legendary silver crystal this time. Inside the tiara, I'm pretty sure that it was actually inside Usagi. Kind of like uh, Kagome and the Shikan Jewel. Mm -hmm. But remember where this tiara came from? Excellent point. But it would be a little awkward for the crystal to come out of the tiara because the tiara is much smaller than the crystal because the crystal is about the size of her brooch. Mm. Well, we won't know until the end of this series. Now, with as pretty as it is and as popular as it seems to be, it may just end up being the end of the season and they're going to be going, well, we weren't really originally planning on going into the other arcs, but... There's still a lot more stuff to draw from in the manga, so yeah, we'll do another season. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty interesting because I think this is meant as like an anniversary of the series, so that's why they're doing such a fabulous job with it, maybe. <laughs> they're definitely doing a really good job this time. Not that I didn't enjoy the older series. No, but this is an excellent adaptation. Mm-hmm. I'm calling it a retelling myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would say adaptation because they're going from the original, which is a manga, so you're adapting a print material to a video material. So do you have more to talk on these wonderful episodes? Of course. We haven't even touched on Usagi's parents' reactions to her alternate personalities. Oh yeah! You know, her mother reading about Sailor Moon in the paper and going, why can't Usagi be like that? And her father seeing her at the ball and going, I wonder if Usagi will grow into a beautiful lady like that. All I'm thinking is dense parents are dense. <laughs> mm -hmm. And we still have to touch on the moment when all four kings show themselves. I'm like, really guys, you just showed up to gloat. There are four of you to three sailor scouts. Kill them now. <laughs> uh, but Zippy wouldn't have a story. <laughs> I know, but they didn't have to show up and gloat. The scouts didn't have to know right away that there were four kings. We're only four episodes in. <laughs> they already know about two. You know, next episode we could have had Kunzai Danzoi site show up. The things you come up with. <laughs> well, it's standard villain tactics. You stand there and gloat when you have superior numbers and could theoretically win at that moment. Because Nephrite didn't need backup. He was already withdrawing. So why have the other kings show up? Uh, but on to a much more wonderful moment. Tuxedo Mask coming across Sailor Moon sleeping on the bench because she's so tired <laughs> and leaning over and kissing her which yeah kissing a girl you don't know in her sleep usually very naughty <laughs> but considering I thought he might they're... kiss her on the forehead so well that would be a little more acceptable mm -hmm, but no he went right for the lips <laughs> Well, he's kind of being pushed around by the half-memories that he has that say this is someone important and precious to him. And I love how before anything can truly happen, Luna shows up. Stay away from Sailor Moon! <laughs> you nasty, nasty man, you! And then he's like, oh, hello, are you an enemy or a friend? Well, considering I'm after the same thing, I could be an enemy. I disappear now. <laughs> That didn't answer my question! Well, I don't think Tuxedo Mask really knows, because he is after the same thing that the Four Kings and the Sailor Scouts are after, but he's helped the Sailor Scouts out, so he's technically good because he doesn't want to see people get hurt. But they're after the same thing, that means they're technically against each other. So while he may not exactly be an enemy, he can't completely be an ally because they have the same goal and they can't both have the crystal. Hmm. And I just realized something. I don't think we've seen a lot of rose throwing in this series so far. We have not. So normally, every time Tuxedo Mask showed up, you saw the rose thrown, you heard the music, and then the camera panned up, and there he was. <laughs> and you were like, oh my god, there he is! <laughs> you know, I like the way the costume's drawn. 
better in this one. I like the way the mask fits. And I feel like his face and eyes have more subtle expression to them. I like how there's more detail in his outfit as well, because there's pleats and everything in his shirt. But in the older anime, they weren't there. I guess it's because we've also come a long way when it comes to animation, so you can afford to put those details in there. And it's also that the costumes are copying the manga, not the anime. All the costumes are different. Like I said, I think that's because um, you can do a lot more nowadays with pretty much the same budget. You know, computer assists and all. And in the older one, you had to simplify things so you wouldn't have to draw as many lines. But in this one, they probably have computers helping them draw some of the lines so they can afford to put extra details into the costume and into the backgrounds, like you said at the arcade. Mm -hmm. Do you have more? <laughs> Jumping back to them actually getting into the party, it was impressive how easily they got in. And then that fun moment when they think they're caught and it's only, oh, your cat can't come with you. <laughs> I love how Sailor Moon just goes, let me handle this, and she just walks. <laughs> <laughs> and then they're like, damn it, Sailor Moon! And then, nope, it's just your cat. Proceed! And it's like, don't leave me here! No, but there is something to be said for walking with confidence and acting like you belong. You can do a lot if you do that and can pull it off. If you look and act like you belong, the odds of somebody messing with you are much lower. Sneaky Spy Tactics 101, brought to you by... <laughs> Sailor Moon, where you can get all your pretty girl and pretty boy needs. Okay. I'm handsome! Okay. <laughs> so what are your final thoughts on the episodes? Very much enjoyed both of them. Ray's introduction, like Amy's, had both development of a reason that they feel a connection with Usagi and that they have a purpose in being a Sailor Scout. And one of the things that I always liked about that episode was that, oh, yeah, I can't rely on Tuxedo Mask to rescue me this time. And, of course, definitely like the dancing episode, chance for pretty dresses to meet at a masquerade, which is very romantic, also very Romeo and Juliet, but we know Sailor Moon is just a tad less tragic than that. <laughs> a tad less tragic, she says. Yes, they both live. <laughs> <laughs> also, sorry, spoilers on Romeo and Juliet. Really? I... <laughs> Overall, I really liked both episodes. I like the way they introduced Mars. I like the new way they're taking her personality. To me, she's a much better character for it. It allows her to be more well-rounded and not just an anger contradiction to Sailor Moon, as it was in the older series. The way she fights, casts fire, yeah. And I love the little connection between her and Usagi, which goes, wait a minute, you have powers too? And yes, pretty dancing, pretty animation. Dense parents are always wonderful. <laughs> and the, oh, thank you for saving me, Sailor Moon. Much better than in one of the old episodes where Tixie Mask goes, these girls are going to be the death of me. <laughs> uh, I still like that line, even though I don't think it was in the Japanese. Mm -hmm. Well, this has been our thoughts on Sailor Moon Crystal, episodes three and four. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to check out more of Lux's art, you can find him over on DeviantArt. If you want to stay up to date with what we're up to, including artwork, you can find us over on Tumblr. Links in the description. And if you're enjoying our work, please consider subscribing and or leaving comments below.